The ship has docked at Limassol, which is a container port about a mile west of the city centre. So we're going to jump on the shuttle bus to take us in. Two minutes away from where the shuttle bus drops you, if you walk towards the sea, you'll come to the tourist information office. So, how do you get around? A horse? These are fun. You bounce up and down on them and they go along. OK, an electric assisted bike. They are at every port, now along with scooters. But I'm told it's an easy port to walk. The marina is very modern and bustling and full of restaurants, shops and ice cream parlours. A lovely place to while away a few hours. When we first found the Hansel and Gretel ice cream parlour in Athens, we were very excited. But now it's a franchise and they're everywhere. Here's another one. As the castle closes at one o'clock, we're going to go left at Hansel and Gretel and cover that first before we go along the beach. Apparently the mosque is being renovated and they found something interesting below it when they were digging. So we'll go and have a look at that and walk around the old town. Cats are a feature of Greece and you'll see them everywhere. The Great Mosque of Limassol is built on the ruins of a Christian church. The castle is just nestling here inside the old shops and market area. It's not wheelchair friendly. Wow. Richard the Lionheart got married in this castle to his princess. I wonder if he had a party on the roof. There's a great view over the bay from the top of the castle. You can also see the Grand Mosque, so it's a great place to get your bearings. If you come on a Sunday, do the castle first because it closes at one. As a bonus, the toilets here are clean and free and there is a ramp. Entrance to the castle is only four euros 50 for the two of us. Oh, this is nice. The castle's well worth the visit. It might look tiny from the outside, but it's much bigger than you think. It goes up and down. One of the nicer ones I've seen, actually. The basement is the oldest part of Lemesos Castle. It's been built over a single aisle Gothic church attributed stylistically to the first third of the 13th century. During the Ottoman period at the end of the 16th century, the basement, like the rest of the castle, took its final form. In the basement of the castle is exhibited the main collection of the medieval and Venetian tombstones, a skeleton belonging to one of the defenders of Lycosia, which had fallen into the hands of the Ottoman besiegers in 1570, is on display in the special showcase. Wow. The first floor is the second floor of cells and it displays features which reflect the social, religious and economic life as well as some weapons. Arab Mill Museum is just behind the castle and there are demonstrations of the equipment used in making carob. The carobs fall from the trees, they're whipped up, mixed with air and turned into snacks. But I guess not using this machinery anymore. If you've got children, there are paddling pools, parks and play areas all along the front.
If you're feeling energetic, just 10 minutes along the promenade away from the port, you'll find some exercise machines and then a little bit further on, you'll find the beach. Here's a little amphitheatre. Limassol is a fun family holiday resort. Just by the beach is the cathedral. Let's go and have a look before we get our feet wet. This is the Franciscan Church of St. Catherine, started in 1872 and finished in 1879. Just past the Catholic Church, opposite the beach, is the municipal gardens, free to enter and loads of shady spots to relax. This is Limassol Zoo, it's very small and it's in the middle of the municipal gardens. There's a few animals in here, but lovely for children. It's like a large petting zoo. Good news, there's more than one set of toilets and they're clearly signposted. You might decide that the park along the beachfront is nicer than the municipal gardens. The grass is softer and there are just as many play parks and shady places to sit. The Byzantine Cathedral was built in the 20th century but over the ruins of a much older church. It's Greek Orthodox and very ornate inside. The tours are mainly what we show you here. Byzantine churches, ruins, a walk around the village. But you could go and visit some neighbouring villages and sample the local food and wine. 